Good morning, guys. Let's start on page 82. Ordinary to amazing. Uh, remember last class that we were uh, talking about the simple past? We saw the some verbs that were regular and others irregular, and the use of did. And we talked about uh, different people, I mean amazing people, people that uh, can do a different thing. I mean, things that it's not everybody that likes to do. And we talked about the Lovelace, Ada Lovelace. She liked it to use the computer and she was the first woman to be a computer programmer. Now I'm still talking about amazing people. Think of a few amazing people, famous people or people you know. Why is each person amazing? Então, pense em alguma pessoa que vocês conhecem, uma pessoa famosa que seja aí diferente, que chame a atenção de vocês. Quem seria essa pessoa e por quê? Camila? Estou pensando, teacher. Ok. Guilherme Neidia? Good morning, Freitas. We are talking about famous uh, people or a person that you know that do something that is amazing, something that is different, that is not everybody that likes to do it. Daniele, do you have any person? I don't know, teacher. I don't remember now. Monique? Ah, teacher, I don't think so. Uh, do you follow a famous person on Instagram or something like this? Yes. So, tell about one person that you like to follow. Vocês podem falar sobre alguém famoso que vocês gostem de seguir. Por que, que vocês seguem essa pessoa? Vamos, gente. Por que, que vocês seguem alguém famoso no Instagram? Além dela ser famosa, o que, que essa pessoa tem? Delgado? Não sei não, teacher. Sei lá, carisma, alguma coisa assim. Can be. Maybe because it's a good actor, actress, and things like that. If you follow, if you admire that person, it's because the person do something different, so that's one reason. Uh, listening, understanding, contrast linkers. We are going to talk about but, however, and although. When you listen, notice the word but, however, and although. They show a contrast between two different ideas. Então, toda vez em que nós vimos o but, o however, e o although, São sempre ideias contrárias, né? ideias contrastantes. O but é sempre uma ideia contrária, por exemplo. I went to the movies, but I didn't go to the... I mean, I, didn't, I went to the mall, but I didn't go to the movies. Então, eu fui ao shopping, mas não fui ao cinema. Então, são sempre coisas contrárias. Por exemplo, I wanted to be a writer, but I became a lawyer instead. Eu queria ser um escritor, mas eu me tornei um advogado. O however, I made a lot of money, however, é o nosso entretanto em português, 
I wasn't completely happy. Tinha dinheiro, porém, né, entretanto, ele não era feliz. E o uh, however e o but são sempre usados no meio da frase. E o although sempre no início. Although I liked my job, I still always dreamed about writing. Então, aqui é o apesar. Apesar dele gostar do trabalho, ele ainda sonha em escrever. Então, geralmente, o although vem no início da frase. However and but, na second clause. Então, é a segunda frase, ou geralmente no meio da frase. São sempre ideias contrastantes, tá? Elas são utilizadas para ligar uma frase na outra, mas são ideias contrastantes, ideias diferentes, aí frases diferentes. Tudo bem? Yes? No? Yes. Yes. So we are going to listen some sentences and you need to make a cross in the word that you listen. Então nós vamos ouvir frases diferentes e vocês vão assinalar se vocês ouviram but, however, although, ou não tinha nenhuma linking uh, word, não tinha nenhuma palavra que ligasse as duas frases. Então é só fazer um xizinho aqui na palavra que vocês ouviram. One. Andrea likes her job. However, she doesn't like the long hours. Number one is... However. Yeah, however. However. My uncle is interesting, but he sometimes talks too much. The word is? But. But. Three. Although the students studied a lot, they didn't do well on the test. Number three. Autumn. Good, autumn. Four. I want to go on vacation, but I don't have enough money. Four. But. Five. I'm really tired. I think I'll stay home tonight. Five. And no linker. No linker. Six. Lydia wanted to live in Sydney. However, she couldn't find a job there. Six. However. However. Six, I mean, number three, listen to the podcast, choose the correct answers. Let me leave the image here. So we are going to hear a conversation and you need to choose the correct answers for the questions. Welcome to Ordinary to Amazing. The podcast about ordinary people who do amazing things. Today we're talking to John Jackson. John, can you tell us your story? Yes, sure. When I was young, I wanted to be a professional rock climber, but instead I became an accountant. Oh, really? Why did you become an accountant? Well, because there weren't a lot of rock climbing jobs. <laughs> Although I liked my job, I still always dreamed about rock climbing. I only climbed about once a year when I was on vacation, and sometimes I went to the rock gym. I see. Then, three years ago, I had an idea. I was at work, at my desk. I looked out the window, and I saw this guy outside looking back at me. He was a window washer. <laughs> Did you talk to him? No, I didn't. The window was closed. <laughs> But he gave me an idea. I thought, I live in a big city, so why don't I climb buildings? Climb buildings? Wow! But there was one problem. It was really expensive. So I had an idea. Oh? What did you do? I got sponsors. Companies pay me to climb up to their offices. And they put me in commercials. Really? That's great. Did you leave your accounting job? Yes, I did. 
I'm a full-time rock climber. I've climbed about 50 buildings all over the country. That's an amazing story. So what happened to him? What did he want to be? A uh, rocky climber. Yes. But why did he give up? What happened to him? He became a... Uh, what was his profession? An accountant. Yes. And one day he saw a guy doing what? Washing the windows. Washing the windows. And what was his idea? A climb buildings. Buildings. And nowadays, is he still working as an accountant? No. No, what is he doing? Uh, she climbed buildings. He's climbing buildings and the companies yeah. are paying him for doing this. Yes. I mean, he doesn't wash the windows, but he climbs the buildings to make a commercial. So do you need to listen again with the description or let's try to answer? Welcome to Ordinary to Amazing, the podcast about ordinary people who do amazing things. Today, we're talking to John Jackson. John, can you tell us your story? Yes, sure. When I was young, I wanted to be a professional rock climber, but instead, I became an accountant. Oh, really? Why did you become an accountant? Well, because there weren't a lot of rock climbing jobs. <laughs> Although I liked my job, I still always dreamed about rock climbing. I only climbed about once a year when I was on vacation, and sometimes I went to the rock gym. I see. Then, three years ago, I had an idea. I was at work, at my desk. I looked out the window, and I saw this guy outside looking back at me. He was a window washer. <laughs> Did you talk to him? No, I didn't. The window was closed. <laughs> But he gave me an idea. I thought, I live in a big city, so why don't I climb buildings? Climb buildings? Wow. But there was one problem. It was really expensive. So I had an idea. Oh? What did you do? I got sponsors. Companies pay me to climb up to their offices, and they put me in commercials. Really? That's great. Did you leave your accounting job? Yes, I did. I'm a full-time rock climber. I've climbed about 50 buildings all over the country. That's an amazing story. So the podcast is about? Ordinary people who do amazing things. Good letter. When he was young, John wanted to be an accountant or a professional rock climber. A professional rock climber. What was John's idea? He wanted to become a window washer. He wanted to climb buildings for fun. Freitas? Letter E. E. He wanted to climb buildings for fun. What was the problem with John's idea, Camila? Letter B, it was too expensive. Was too expensive. Now companies pay John to climb, Monique? Buildings. Buildings. So that's the, a picture of a person washing windows. 
So, uh, still talking about the simple past, we form simple past, yes or no. Questions with did plus object plus infinity without to. Então, did é um auxiliar utilizado para dizer que as frases estão no passado. Ele não tem tradução, porém ele indica que a frase está no passado. Did you like your job? Você gostava do seu trabalho? Você gostou? Yes, I did. Did you get a new job? Você teve um trabalho novo? No, I didn't. Então, did não tem tradução, ele só indica que a frase está no passado. Então, vou usar o didn't e o verbo volta para o presente, tá? Porque o did já indica que é passado. Podemos usar também com double age questions. Where did you work? Onde você trabalhou? I worked at a bank. Então, aqui, where did, o verbo continua da mesma forma no presente. Why did you leave your job? Porque você deixou o seu trabalho? Because I didn't make enough money. Mesma coisa que why. Double it question. O did o auxiliar no passado, o verbo no presente e o complemento da frase. A negativa coloca o didn't, o verbo no presente da mesma forma. Questions? Dúvidas até agora? No. No. So, complete the questions and answers in the simple past. Então, aqui tem a pessoa que vocês vão usar, o verbo e o complemento da frase. Então, na verdade, vocês vão fazer só o início das frases. Um minutinho para vocês irem respondendo. Eu vou chamando as pessoas para ir falando as respostas, tá? Então, deixa eu fazer a primeira de exemplo para vocês verem. You study English when you were a child. Como fica a pergunta aqui que eu tenho que começar? Como que eu tenho que começar a frase? Did? Did. Did you study English when you were a child? Verb. Yes, I did. did. Assim por diante, os minutinhos aí para vocês irem respondendo. Com relação aos exercícios da plataforma que vocês responderam na semana passada, é mais fácil responder. Por capítulos ou vocês preferem responder tudo de uma vez só? Ah, teacher, eu preferi por capítulos. Tá. Achou mais fácil ou porque não acumula bastante? Não acumula. Ah, eu achei mais fácil de fazer. Tá. Fazer tudo de uma vez cansa, né? Aí é melhor capítulo. Sim. Então tá, provavelmente toda semana nós faremos um pouquinho Com exceção da revisão 2 Que eu vou deixar a revisão 2 não Toda vez que tiver uma revisão, vocês viram que no final do capítulo tem uma, uma revisão A revisão eu vou deixar ela sempre bloqueada porque vai ter um dia específico para respondê-la, tá? Mas também a revisão são só dois exercícios, é bem rapidinho Então vamos lá, Camila, como ficou a number two? Uh, did you take go to the movies last night? Very good. Did they go to the movies last night? Monique, como ficou a resposta do number two? É, no, they didn't. Lembrando que o didn't é abreviado, tá? Pode ser o did not. Delgado, number three. Did he call you this morning? Uh, Ranieri, the answer? No, he didn't. Number 
for Freitas? Uh, did you, we have homework last night? Ana Laura? Eu, pro. Yes. No, we did. Yes. No, yes, uh, yes, we did. Camila, number five. Did your parents visit? Did your parents visit? Monique? Uh, yes, they did. Isis, e no passado também, independente se for terceira pessoa ou não, não acrescenta S nem nada. Só prestar atenção se usou o did, o verbo volta para o presente. Number five, make yes or no questions with the simple past form. They listen to the podcast again to check your answers. As frases estão embaralhadas, então é necessário formar perguntas. Vamos, eu vou colocar o último primeiro. Why did you become an accountant? Como fica a primeira pergunta? Why? Why did you did become you? an accountant? Did you talk to him? Number two. Uh, did you talk to him? Very good. I will let you respond. Did you talk to him? Let's answer three and four. Let's ask him again. Delgado, number three. What did you do? What did you do? Good. And number four. Ranieri. Did you leave your accounting job? Did you leave your accounting job? Good. So, that's it. Uh, tomorrow we are going to have a song activity. Nós vamos fazer uma atividade com música. E se for rápida atividade, nós continuamos com os vídeos do livro. Questions so far? Alguma dúvida até agora? Não. Posso mudar aqui? So that's it. We finish. Então amanhã nós nos encontramos pela manhã novamente e faremos uma atividade com música. Na sexta-feira, novamente eu vou liberar mais uns exercícios da plataforma. Ficarei online na plataforma para ver o que vocês têm feito. Tá? E a chamada será feita pela Plataforma Oxford. Tudo bem? Yes? Yes. Ok, so thanks for coming. Have a nice day, guys. Bye bye. Have a nice bye day. Teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.